Ta-da! I'll pull the engine out. Here it is over here. There it is there on the ground. And here is the new engine. Right, so there's the existing engine from the white car. Uh, I've pulled off the front timing cover. Look at all this. Uh, so I'm going to pull this one apart and see what's happened to it eventually. Um, but all this oil everywhere doesn't look good. I don't understand how they get so friggin' oily. Like, look at this. I mean, that's probably been a, uh, a uh, cover here leaking, maybe, I'd say. Uh, but there's shit everywhere on this thing. That's power steering fluid, because that's where the power steering pump sat. Uh, so what we're going to do is pull the manifold off here and take that turbo off, because it's a VF... 23 or a 28 one of the two uh sti turbo and we're going to put it on this so as you can see here newly reconditioned heads uh oops train there on a uh good condition we hope uh 205 short block even this look at this it's got all crap uh, under here. Now this engine had an oil leak. Uh, that's probably what that oil was built up for. So just there, if you remember seeing uh, the other engine, there's an oil gallery goes right through there. Uh, and this gentleman had an oil leak here. Um, so what he did was he took the heads off, got them reconditioned, uh, and then he just couldn't be bothered putting the car back together. So sold the engine to me. Uh, so hopefully it's good, and it is going in that white mobile there, uh, and I'm going to decide whether or not I steal the interior from this and put it in the blue car, or what happens. Maybe I'll just leave this as is. Um, I was going to give this car to Oliver. He still hasn't got his learners yet, and the blue car is looking like it's going to be quite expensive to fix. Um, but who knows, I might even put the engine in this, register it, and just putt around in it. Who knows? Uh, I don't know what the plan is yet, but, uh, in the meantime, we're going to take that manifold off, get all this one ready, and chuck it back in there. Uh, also, today's Monday, uh... So on Saturday, I took uh, that bottom end from the blue car up to see John, a uh, friend of Alan from uh, the Skid Factory. And uh, he said he's going to check it over for me, uh, check the bearing clearances. Uh, also, the head shop called me and said uh, that at some point the pistons had contacted the head. Now... I know from that, rotating that 207 short block that I just took up the coast, uh, that the be uh, the pistons stop 1.7 millimeters below the height of the deck. Uh, so in its current form, it hasn't been, it's not possible that it could have hit the heads. Uh, so I imagine that was when the original STI version three bottom end went uh, and it had rod knock or it could have been from that 207 short block having rod knock, and that's why it's got aftermarket rods, uh, etc. So, who knows, but um, we're, we're getting it checked out. Hopefully, hopefully it's fine, okay, because I really don't want to spend three grand uh, on a new 207 short block, or th the same kind of money having that one rebuilt, uh, etc. So we're crossing our fingers, aren't we? Aren't we? So we've got the engine in the white car now. Uh, it was a little bit of a struggle. No, wasn't too bad. Uh, just swung it in there. Tried to line it up 
with with the gearbox at the back here. Uh, the trickiest part was trying to get them to go together, mate together. So what I did was I jacked up the gearbox uh, and then I kind of tried to angle the engine and push it in. And eventually I got it, uh, I think, helping by turning the, uh, turning the engine over at the front by rotating the, the clutch, etc. Got it all to uh, go together. And then with the help of the bolts that, that bolt it together, pulled it all together. And then I've just lowered it down uh, and sat the uh, engine mount bolts in the holes in the bottom. I've still yet to put nuts in those, but I'm um, pretty sure they're in the right spot. Uh, so yeah, I just started connecting a couple of things. It probably, it won't take very long at all, I don't think, uh, famous last words, to, um, you know, just to plug everything back in. I've already done the fuel lines, set the air, com air conditioning compressor in the right place, uh, hooked up all this spaghetti for the boost controller. Uh, I might see if I can simplify some of that. Um, still got to bolt up the exhaust properly. Uh, but um, yeah, it looks good. Looks good. Got a chance to sort of clean the engine bay. Uh, so it should look pretty smart once, uh, I guess. I mean, the plans for this is probably to move it on. Um, it was going to be Oliver's, but I mean, work hasn't been too busy. The, the costs maybe with the blue car might be a little bit expensive. Uh, but I mean, it just depends. I don't know, but I probably am going to try and get this one going as soon as possible, uh, get it registered, uh, and then drive it around. I mean, provided that thing's fine. Uh, you know, we haven't seen it run yet. Could be, could be stuffed, but I mean, I don't think so. The guy seemed pretty sort of trustworthy. Uh, so there you go. Rebuilt heads, uh, etc., etc. Um, just got to remember to put oil in it before I try and start it. He he he. There it is. Uh, quickly show you the engine bay. There we go. So we've got the intercooler piping from the crashed car. Uh, we've actually got the big intercooler that was on this car. Uh, manifold from this car, but new engine with rebuilt heads. Uh, VF23 turbo from the old engine. And then an exhaust. An exhaust half from the crashed car and half from this car. You can't really see my handiwork. I'll try and get some more footage later. Well, got my vape, got my WRX, found out I'd broken the throw out bearing. So after almost completely buttoning it up, I had to pull it all back apart again. Um, but that was all right. We got here in the end. Uh, it's the tune on the ECU is quite rich, so when decelerating, it makes some uh, crazy explosion sounds basically. Uh, but overall, the car's pretty good. All right, just got done robbing the bank. Oh, it's still fucking, you know, that, that thing. So, yeah, white car runs. Uh, there's always something that, that needs fixing up. Uh, they're never completely done, obviously. But uh, this one isn't too bad. It doesn't have too many issues. Uh, but essentially, to make it, if I wanted to make it perfect... It would be uh, that gearbox seal leak, possibly a dyno tune, and paint are basically the three things. Uh, 
because when I go to sell it, I, I want whoever buys it to have a good working car um, and I kind of want to get the money for it that it's worth. Uh, I guess right now, as is, I could probably get, say, nine grand, nine and a half maybe. Um, you know, without it backfiring and stuff, I could maybe get 10, 10 and a half, uh, maybe 12, but not really because the paint's shit. Uh, but with good paint, uh, I'm in, you know, I reckon I can get anywhere from realistically probably 12 to 15. Uh, you know, maybe 15 to 18, who knows? Cause like the car's in really good nick. Um, and obviously it's an engine with rebuilt heads, aftermarket ECU. Uh, you can't see it here, but there's a boost gauge and uh, I've added, uh, or I'm in the process of adding a wideband O2 thing. Um, so I've got that to tell me what's going on when the car's decelerating. Uh, there must be some sort of uh, enrichment or something going on, but uh, I'm just waiting on a cable for the ECU. It's I could have made one, but I, I've got enough electrical stuff to do, so I just bought one. Um, so what else? Yeah, I mean the car runs good. It's uh, VF23 turbo. Uh, so I've only got it behind the phone here. There's a uh, HKS a boost controller. Um, uh, tune A is at about 12, 13 PSI. And then uh, B is at about 15 PSI. Um, from what guys tell me, you don't really want to go more than that, more than 15 um, on stock head bolts. Unfortunately, the guy who had the heads rebuilt and uh, redid the engine, he um, he chose to just do stock head bolts, but he, he did use brand new ones, which, um, I don't know, I mean, yeah, it's, it is whatever. Um, I don't, I don't know whether it'd make much difference, but, uh, you know, he's a mechanic, so I guess he knows what he's doing. I would have just reused the bolts or, or bought ARP ones. So, uh, we're gonna drive this car for a bit longer, try and out, iron out all the, uh, all the bugs, uh, make it as saleable as possible. And then uh, the blue car, the, the engine that came in that, uh, the heads are back from being rebuilt. Uh, they look quite nice. Uh, the, the short block, which has uh, aftermarket I-beam rods, uh, the stock 207 pistons, etc., uh, etc., et needed a little bit of machine work so John uh, who Turbo Yoda put me onto uh, he's the engine builder that Alan uses uh, in the skid factory uh, for like the Iron Lion etc uh, he's like a measurement wizard I guess you would call him well, anyway uh, he he's resized the rods uh, I think he's polished the crank because uh, he was saying it looks like somebody had honed honed the bores with the crank still in the engine or something something weird but uh anyway he's he's getting that all buttoned up and uh i'm probably gonna run it to be honest um i mean what i might do is i might put it up for sale see if anyone wants to buy it and if no one wants to buy it i'll just use it um, I was going to buy a brand new short block, but I've kind of, I don't really have 
too much spare money at the moment. So um, unless you know, unless things get busy or with work and you know, or I sell one of my bikes or something, I'm just gonna essentially I'm just gonna take my time now with the blue car. I've, I've pretty much got everything. Uh, I bought a new oil pump. Uh, I need to work out what size sump it's got because uh, there's a dead, oh well there's the bottom end from this car uh, sitting in the in the stand at home and so that's got a two litre sump on it and a, uh, a dipstick and what I found at home and I think it's the dipstick off the EJ207 uh, is a 2.5 litre uh, 2.5 litre dumpstick uh, dipstick a dipstick off a 2.5 litre so the the oil pans up the Sunshine Coast with the engine um, so it might have a 2.5 litre sump on it or um, or with it anyway so uh, I bought a baffle a, uh, a killer bee oil baffle uh, off my new friend Ralph. Uh, I don't think Ralph watches a lot of YouTube, but g'day Ralph if you if if you stumble across this video. Um, but Ralph has a rally car, and uh, he was sort of educating me on a few things uh, regarding building engines, and, uh, particularly Subaru engines, and what different people think. There's another channel that I, I've i been watching and he's in Germany called Subi Performance. And that guy's a fucking wizard. Now, the thing is, what he does is he reams the tunnel. But in order to ream the tunnel, I don't know whether he faces the case halves to make them smaller and then reams the tunnel back to standard size. Or... Yeah, I don't, I don't quite understand what he's doing because he doesn't explain it all that often. He talks about the front journal and the rear journal being, uh, being undersized. And so he passes his reamer through and enlarges those but it doesn't really touch the other uh, bearing faces. So I don't know if the other bearing faces are already oversized by a thou or half a thou or whatever the size of these oversized bearings are. Um, but that's what he does, essentially. Um, now I watched another video of another guy and he did explain he does machine the case halves. That brings them closer together and then he actually centers the block on his milling machine by using brass pieces of brass around each corner and then tightens it tighter to uh, align it on his CNC. Um, so he measures the bottom bore and then measures the top and he gets it all lined up then he bores downwards with the two cases bolted together on his uh, milling machine. So essentially for the blue car, uh, that's pretty much it. It's going to sort out the sump situation, decide if I'm going to use the short block I've got that's been uh, refreshed with new bearings and had a bit of machine work done and cleaned properly. Uh, and then I need an, uh, the oil heater cooler thing because if that gets bits of bearing in it or anything in it, it'll go through your new engine. Uh, what else? Got the oil pump. Um, that's really about it. I've got to buy all the sensors, the additional sensors for the link. Um, so on the Cresta, I used a combo oil 
pressure temperature sensor. I've already got the fuel pressure sensor. Uh, I need a Mac valve for the boost control. And then uh, there's something else. I've got an air intake sensor coming. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Put some standard standard taillights in there. Uh, if we get it painted, might put the original decals on there. Uh, there's the exhaust off the old car. Doesn't quite sit how it should. It should come out a bit more and sit a bit more up at an angle, but you know, does the job. Um, what have we got? We've got WRP10 wheels, which is quite interesting because it's got the gearbox and the diff from a WRP10 and the suspension as well. So that's why it's a little bit lower. Um, this is how the front end up, front end ended up carbon fog light covers and a version 5 lip there's my bike and uh, there you go all right so that's the white car uh, now for the blue car so uh, let me see here's the heads uh, version 3 STI uh, there you go. So they've been rebuilt. Uh, new intake valves. And then they've got the existing sodium filled exhaust valves. So uh, if you have or haven't seen the last video about the blue car, uh, basically I got the blue car engine running on two cylinders, uh, ended up pulling the engine out and found some idiot had made an, a mess of, uh, of the engine. Uh, essentially, they'd taken the heads off and then put the heads back on, reusing the head gaskets, but sealing them with red silicon permaseal. Uh, what else did they do? On the driver's side they got the intake and the exhaust cams back to front uh, so that's why it wouldn't run i got it to run on two cylinders on the driver's side uh, but it bent a whole bunch of valves so essentially i got these heads rebuilt uh it cost me about 1500 australian dollars and uh they're essentially brand new now the bottom end uh, it's been so long since I did the last video, I can't remember, but the bottom end uh, was also a bit iffy. So I, I ended up pulling off the pan uh, and it turns out that it had aftermarket uh, H-beam rods, con rods in there. Uh, but it looked like that somebody hadn't cleaned the engine properly. Uh, so from what I can gather, somebody bought a brand new 207 short block, probably strapped these heads to it, but didn't clean, say the oil pan or the oil galleries, or they didn't service the heads or anything like that. What happens there is that any bearing or anything that was in these in the heads or in the oil galleries or any of the oiling equipment from the old engine will just go straight into your new engine. So what I believe is that they bought a 207 short block, put it all together, crap came out of here, came out of the oil galleries and the, like the oil cooler 
maybe the sump, maybe the oil pump, and fucked the brand new 207 short block. Then I think what they did, whether it's the same person or another person, they've gone and pulled it apart, just bought some random rods. Uh, the rods are actually quite decent, but bought some random rods, put it all back together uh, with the red silicon, just crossing their fingers that it would run and it didn't happen. So, uh, I didn't know enough about the short block, so I reached out to a couple of people and uh, Turbo Yoda, um, who is, uh, I guess, a bit of a Subaru guru, he put me in touch with John, uh, who's an engine builder, uh, because the main thing was somebody needed to tear down that bottom end and inspect it, somebody who knew what they were looking at, and uh, you know, tell me what can be fixed and what can't. So essentially, uh, I can't thank John enough, but he's resized the rods. Uh, I believe he's polished the crank because there was a little bit of uh, scoring kind of thing. And I said to him, I said, look, you know, if I need to buy a new crank, I will. And he says, no, it, it should be fine. We just need to give it a bit of a polish. Uh, apparently, yeah, he, he'd resized the rods and uh, I think sort of rehoned the bore or the bores while he had the case halves apart. And he's put that all back together with new bearings and uh, he says it's good to go. So I've got to go pick that up this weekend. Um, and then, yeah, heads are here. There's the manifold. Uh, here's my some 850cc injectors, some Chinese fuel rails, which I'm going to try. Uh, these are some who knows what brand headers. Uh, I've got my mate to fix up the flange here. That's the old turbo from uh, the white car. So we're currently heading up to the Sunshine Coast uh, to pick up the engine for the blue car. Um, this is the Cresta I spent ages building. So anyway, we're leaving from Brisbane now. It's a rainy day. I was going to drive the white WRX because, you know, four-wheel drive and uh, good on fuel, etc. But um, I'm going to show my mate Miguel the Cresta because uh, he hasn't seen it before. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can see in the background there has actually got um, Louis Vuitton fabric. Uh, that's sort of one of the cool features about this Cresta, that uh, it had that since I bought it. Um, not sure if it came from Japan like that, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a pretty cool touch, and I've not seen another car with with something like that before. So here we have the 207 short block. Uh, it's been decked, uh, all stripped down and cleaned out. Uh, and then John's reassembled it for me. He checked the oil pump uh, to make sure that's all good and that's fine. Uh, so these are STI factory forged pistons. Um, let's see if I can, I mean, if ever you've seen a 207 before, it's what it is, nothing too exciting. S20C701, S20C701, that's what denotes that it is a, uh, 207. Uh, unfortunately, he fitted the sump already. Uh, I just wa I wanted to show you the H-beam rods that it has. Uh, but I think 
I may have some old footage of that. So that's what our bores look like. Uh, they're all nicely been honed. Uh, pistons have all been cleaned up. Uh, not sure what these numbers mean. Uh, I guess 91.99 is the probably the outer bore and 91.96 is the uh, it's probably the inner dimension of the piston. Um, so normally what you do, like if you were to buy this as a short block, you wouldn't get the sump with it and you wouldn't have the oil pump. Uh, but I bought a kit, uh, a gasket kit. And so John reassembled it all properly. And so what I need to do is I need to put the uh, oil pump, sorry, the water pump on there uh, and the oil heater cooler. Um, I'll show you a couple of bits down here. This is why the water pump's not on there. It's all rusty, probably from uh, just sitting there, I reckon. That engine probably sat for a while. And then this is the oil heater. Uh, and it looks like it's been cleaned, but I'll show you inside. So the reason you don't reuse one of these is, see down inside there? It's kind of hard to hold the phone and, but See down inside there how intricate. So if you had some, if you had bad bearings or any kind of uh, grit or whatever, it can quite easily get caught inside this thing. So you don't ever reuse one of these. Um, there was a guy on the internet the other day chirping saying that, oh, I've got three of these at home and I just washed them out with my ultrasonic cleaner. Well, good on you, dude. There's no fucking way I would put that on an engine. One little bit of shit still stuck in that will absolutely destroy your newly rebuilt engine. So there you go. That's that. Um, what else? Don't know. So I've got to get, look at our, look at this surface here. So that's our short block. Then these are our heads and they've been newly surfaced. Uh, so we just need, I do have head gaskets, they're over there, uh, but I got the wrong thickness. I got them to suit these version three STI heads. Uh, but when John did the piston to deck height, uh, and, you know, measured the volume of the pistons, etc. Uh, it came to be that in order to get uh, above 8 to 1 compression, I needed a 0.78 millimeter head gasket, and those that head gasket's over there is 1.37. So basically, 1.4 millimeters, I'm 0.6 millimeters too thick. Um, so Pablo at Boosted Performance Parts uh, said he's more than happy to exchange the gasket for me. Uh, so I think I will do that. And uh, yeah, there you go. I mean, this sort of stuff here looks kind of ugly, but that's just your water jacket. And that's a bit of staining from that old water pump. Um, obviously gonna have to get a water pump uh, there is, of course, this grimy beast over here. Uh, I'll have to have a look. You can see, can you see in there, the shape of the piston's a little bit different. Um, this one's actually got a graphite gasket too, which is weird. Um, see the piston's got a big square cutout. 
Whereas this guy has reliefs for the for the um, for the valves. So yeah, there you go. In fact, look here. You can see this is from when the uh, the valves contacted the piston uh, when it was in in last time. So there you go.